With the inevitable amazing success of the Super Mario Bros. movie, Nintendo and Illumination, they have a golden ticket on their hand. One that they are surely not going to squander. So today I present five movies that I want to see next in this Nintendo Cinematic Universe, the NCU if you will. Introductions out of the way, let's begin. We're gonna make this a numbered list out of five because that's just what you do on YouTube. So in the five slot, I have Star Fox. Not because I want it or need it, but because it just has to happen. We have to build out the roster. I'm not totally craving a Star Fox film, although if these are all in my mind presented by Illumination, they all follow a similar art style, then I want this to be the first one out of the gates that says, okay, we're going a different direction than Mario. We're taking to the sky. We got talking animals. It's crazy. It fits though. We already have a talking ape with Donkey Kong, so we're slowly leading into the animal critter stuff. It might get sloppy with a pick I have down the road, but we'll address that later. For now, I wanna see Skippy. I wanna see that dumbass toad flying around needing saving. I gotta have Fox behind the pilot chair doing his thing. Barrel rolling out of danger, blowing stuff up, taking to the skies, taking to the water, taking to the land. I want transforming vehicles. I want some amazing action set pieces in this thing. I want Nintendo to do what they Nintendo don't do for the Star Fox property and make something good again. Remember, do you remember the good old days when Star Fox was awesome? Way back on the Nintendo 64? Sure, you can say that that weird spin-off RPG style game was good. It originally was Dino Planet or something. It wasn't even a Star Fox game. It did give us Crystal. It did give the furries what they needed in their community. But I need more. I need high octane adventure. And Nintendo and Illumination can do it. In the number four spot, we got Samus Aran. We got Metroid. This is going to be a darker, sinister film taking place in the cold reaches of outer space, traversing different planets. Samus Aran, naturally voiced by the beautiful, sultry, silky smooth voice of Scarlett Johansson. It has to happen. It has to happen. I also wouldn't mind if they modeled the character off of her either, but that's for another, that's for another video altogether. In this, I wanna see Samus alien style going around icy terrain, going through a volcanic area, taking on some of her greatest foes. You know Ridley's in the mix, but he's not gonna show himself right away. He's gonna skulk in the distance. <laughs> Ominously, in the shadows, in the distance, waiting to strike. This is gonna be a character that's gonna get teased several times before the big reveal towards the final fight, which is gonna be with Mother Brain. So she's gonna have two. Two opponents to take out at once. Her blaster is going to keep getting upgrades as this thing goes. From a little pea shooter to a transforming behemoth. It's going to be epic! And the last and final thing that we are all craving more than anything else in Hollywood is a good old fashioned STRONG FEMALE LEAD! And quite frankly, it's about time. Let me Bob Ross this bitch. Get my canvas, get my paintbrush, and draw you something up really quick. Samus Aran. Weathered. Disheveled. Half her armor is gone. Zero suit teasing underneath. Again, in that Samus figure. What is wrong with me today? Melt down, blood dripping, illumination art style. So little, little cutesy still, I guess, but we can try to adult it a little bit more. Volcano on the horizon, blowing its load. <laughs> Audience is blowing their load too, because this is where the film is gonna hit its final crescendo. She starts to rise up, ash sprinkling from the heavens above, singeing her armor. <laughs> Hair half out of the helmet. She sees Ridley woof, 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 woof. come down, looks over this way. Baby Metroids coming towards her. 
She starts to load the shooter. <laughs> Music is epic. It's sick. It's ep sick. <laughs> she is going nuts. Drops into her ball. Sonic's the hell out of there. Jumping in and out of crevasses. Swinging around. It is insanity. It's Metroid. It's the film I want. It has to be made. Music has some opera style stuff going on. I need it now. Inject it right into my veins, Nintendo. In the number three spot. We're talking Zelda. We're talking Zelda. And I'm going to get a little controversial here. I'm actually going to pick a lane. I am going to pinpoint the game I want. Some of you are going to drop the mouth. A gap. A ghast. Zelda Wind Waker! I need it! Zelda Wind Waker, baby! Give it to me yesterday. I want to be traveling the high seas with Link, with the wind wand, ski dee 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 dee, opening chests, hovering on a leaf. The art style fits perfectly with illumination. It could even do a little bit of the cell shading if it wants to. It has one of the most interesting stories a princess in disguise. A Hyrule underwater, lost to the ages, and one of the most epic final duels with Ganon, aka Ganondorf, aka one of the coolest villains in video game history, where Link grabs the sword, runs up the fucker, and <laughs> implants the thing into his head, right into the skull. As Zelda helps up from the sidelines, reflecting light off a shield. It's amazing. It, it, it truly is a game for the ages, and it's a game I want to see brought to the big screen. Listen, I know Link's a kid throughout the whole thing, but that just lets it grow, right? That gives us the opportunity to see him grow up as a character, become a teen, become a man. But we have to start at the ground one. We got to start at Wind Waker. Illumination can have fun with this too, of course. We'll see him go into houses, just break in, <laughs> start shattering vases, <laughs> grabbing rupees. It's taking everything and just looting the place, ransacking and getting the hell out of there. We'll have dungeon sections. We will have combat with the master sword. Can you imagine? Can you imagine him going into the woods? Kills Tingle, naturally. Decaps that guy. Can't stand Tingle. That's a personal thing. We can't put that in a kid's movie, I understand. Axe Tingle, I don't want him in there. Toss him asunder. We're going to have giant octopus boss battles in the film. He's going to take out an octopus while he's on the seas. Okay, little Pirates of the Caribbean mixed in with my Link adventure. I'm fine with it. Giant birds. Bad guys where he has to use a hook shot. He grabs new weapons as the film progresses. It's, it's, it's a perfect, perfect experience for the whole family. Keep it easy, keep it breezy. Hour 30, hour 45, in and out. We have a picture here. I want to be the very best. No one ever was. Pokemon movie. It has to happen. And no, not Detective Pikachu. Are you out of your fucking mind with that? It's trash! People just pretend to like it because they love Pokemon. And I know there's a bunch of animated Pokemon movies, okay? Mid at best. I said it. I stand by it. And I saw some of them in theaters. Day fun. What I want is an Illumination Pokemon movie. No, I don't want them farting on each other and then, you know, swallowing the farts and throwing up and then another one throws up from the throw up. No, I don't want juvenile humor, okay? But I want the Squirtle Squad. I want cute Charmander. I want an amazing relationship with two best friends traveling the, 
the countryside, Ash Ketchum and Pikachu. Yeah, I know they retired Ash Ketchum. I'm taking him out of retirement already. Dusting off the cap. Is he a dumbass? Yeah, of course. Has he not grown really at all over the course of 20 or so seasons? Absolutely. We're taking him back to square one. We're going to rebuild this character the right way. Because the, the pieces are all there. Young kid, rebellious, wants to make a life of his own at the age of like 10 or 11. <laughs> the time that you leave home, of course. Gets his first Pokemon. Has this amazing bond with Pikachu. I mean, the, the, really the movie should be the rise of Ketchum and Pikachu as they start their journey and head to the Master League. Do we end with the Master League? I don't even know if we go there. I think it's premature. If we're building a franchise, let's build it properly. Master League, that's the be-all end-all, right? Becoming an Elite Four? That's the end game. We don't start at the end game, we stop there. So we start with just a simple buddy road trip adventure between these two heroes. Yeah, we bring Misty in, of course, voiced by Scarlett Johansson. We bring in Brock. Seriously, Misty's voiced by like Anna Kendricks or something. We, 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 keep, it, we keep it familiar and annoying enough to work. Anna Kendrick's fine, but she, she can play that role. Uh, Brock, we got to go with like John Cena or someone. Brock is the man. So we get a man to play him. Nurse Joy is obviously in the film. Officer Jenny's obviously in the film. We got a, we got, got a formula. We got to stick with what works. Team Rocket, you better believe Team Rocket's there. We have all the pieces, people. This is a slam dunk of a film. Ash Ketchum and Pikachu on their journey. He runs into the Squirtle Squad. He gets a Charmander. Maybe sees an epic Pokemon. I don't want Mewtwo in this thing. Okay, I'm going to say that right now. Mewtwo's out. He's overplayed. He's not that interesting. And all he does is monologue to no end. I want him out of the thing. Okay? You save him maybe later down the road when we get to the Smash Brothers universe. And I guess I blew my load early because we're going to the number one. And that's a Smash Brothers movie. We all knew it was going to be here, right? We all knew this was going to be the end game. We've established some key characters already. We have Mario. We have Donkey Kong from the Mario movie. He's a piggyback character, a la Hulk. Yes, Hulk did have his own film, but it's kind of like an ugly stepbrother of the MCU. It's part of it, but eh, is it? Is it? We have two established characters, Donkey Kong. We got Diddy Kong in the mix. You can easily bring in more of these guys. So we have two key ingredients right out of the gates. We have a Metroid film, so we got Samus in there. We got a whole slew of Pokemon with Ash Ketchum, Brock, and Misty all coming together for this one, a nice family reunion. And we got Link, national treasure, Link himself. So we have a picture here, folks. I don't want Master Hand as the villain. We're walking away from Master Hand. The whole child play toy thing that they initially conjured up in the first Smash Brothers for the 64, it works, nobody cares. We're making a movie now though. I don't want giant white Mickey Mouse gloves attacking these guys. That's not threatening no matter how they play it out in the games. No matter what they wrap those gloves in, they're still Mickey. Oh, ho, oh, oh, hi guys, ho, oh, you're gonna die, motherfucker. No, not happening. The villain's probably a combination of Bowser and Ganon coming together. We save a bigger threat for later down the road. Okay, we don't need to figure that out right now. We're just trying to get through this first phase. We got Ganon, we got Bowser coming together, teaming up. It's going to be a bedlam. It's going to be crazy. Dead's rising. We got Koopa Troopas all over this bitch. And you know what else? We're going to introduce Kirby. Kirby's going to fly in on a star. He's going to smash down from another planet. He's going to help these guys out. He doesn't talk because we got to keep him cute. He's borderline a Pokemon already, so we're not really, it's not a bridge that far away from here. We got to put some cameos in here too. Not going to be big ones. They're just going to be little throwaway shots. Um, maybe while disaster is happening, we see how it's affecting others around the globe. Maybe around, may, I don't think we take this universe levels. This is just an Earth problem, or I guess whatever, you know, Mushroom Kingdom is an Earth. So yeah, it's an Earth problem. We maybe see the ice climbers on their way up a mountain peak when some rumblings happen, thanks to whatever's go whatever shenanigans is going on. So they're like, ah, ah, and that's it, that's it. One shot of the ice climbers done. Maybe uh, uh, the stupid dogs laughing, and because of what's going on, there's an earthquake, and he falls and dies. 
and then all the ducks shit on his corpse and fly away. I'd love to see that, that smug prick. Sorry, that's a, a personal hang up. We got Star Fox and the crew. We already established that very early on. They're gonna be in the mix. It's just, it's just such an easy win here. Nintendo really is the Disney of video games. I've said this, many people have said this. It's not hard to see why. Now they already have a theme park at Universal. It's all happening finally. What we saw back in the NES, SNES, 64 days, it's finally coming to fruition. And I'm happy to be here. And those are my picks. There's a lot more we can go with. There's Earthbound, there's Pikmin, there's, uh, I guess, more modern stuff would be uh, whatever that Squid game is that people like. Not Squid Billies, that was a show. Squid Kids is nothing. Maybe those Splatoon octopus things come into the later movies. It doesn't matter at that point. We're already making money. We're already having a good time. Those are my picks, though. I think we need to start with a nice foundation. This provides us. This provides us with a lot. And most of it takes place in this fictitious earth that we've created with pallet towns and orange islands and mushroom kingdoms. So it's all kind of enclosed there with an occasional space ranger flying in and out in the mix. I want to hear from you though. You like this play? You like this setup? Let me know in the comments. Like this video if you had a good time. Please subscribe if you haven't. I post tons of movie reviews each and every week. Would love to have you stick around. And with that, I prepare my next Nintendo list for Phase 2, 3, and beyond. Take care.